Welcome in again to another edition of Musings from the Mountains, the video podcast from WSports.com. Our wonderful wizard behind the camera, Tyson Murray, uh, produces this. If you have checked out his work, you probably should. If you haven't already, uh, he does this every week. If you've watched this and enjoy it, you'll like some of his other stuff. Check out some Highly of the links. Highly recommend. Yes. Highly recommend. Um, we've got a lot of stuff to discuss here. We're going to jump around in today's edition. No football game. Football's over. West Virginia season ended at 5-7. and seven. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving break. Uh, the football game is kind of dated at this point, so we won't go back too much on it. But West Virginia was able to beat TCU on the road. Um, you're not going to throw any ticker tape parades. You're not going to build a statue. Uh, you're not going to throw confetti for a 5-7 and seven season in Neil Brown's first year. But what you are going to do is feel a little bit optimistic. I think West Virginia carries some really positive momentum into the offseason. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a game they had to have, but you knock TCU out of bowl in the process. You know, there's enough 6-6 six and six teams to slot to take all the bowls. You knock a, I guess you can call them a rival. You played them on Thanksgiving, they're a rival, right? Maybe. Yeah. ESPN wants them to be a rival. <laughs> so you, you knock a rival out of a bowl, you get a big win, you win two of your last three, both on the road, and you really get some momentum, you know, heading mm-hmm. into the offseason, into recruiting. I think that that at least deserves some recognition, Patrick. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say the TCU win was a much needed win, but it helps. Obviously, it helps for that momentum heading into the offseason. Uh, like you said, well, it's not a five and seven, really not an ideal season, but considering what Neil Brown and the staff had roster wise and personnel wise, all the injuries uh, for them to win two of their two of their three final games. I mean, that's a great, you know, it's a great way to end the season. And like I said, I think positive momentum is better than negative momentum at this point. Yes, <laughs> I set the total at five and a half uh, in the spring. I thought five and a half was the over under. They hit the under at five. I don't think you're disappointed at that. No, you're never going to celebrate not making a bowl. You're not going to celebrate a losing season. But what you can celebrate is the trajectory of this program. Uh, you're coming off some a really strong finish of the year. You got a lot of guys back. 16 of 20 guys are expected mm-hmm. in total in terms of total snaps. 16 of 20 are expected back next year on offense. And then 11 of 20 on defense. And that number could also be adjusted maybe if a guy gets a waiver, <laughs> George Campbell. Or uh, perhaps, you know, some of these guys that would have played a lot more snaps in the season don't get hurt. Uh, Vandarius Cowan and some of those others. So, Quandary, well, no. Quandary's? No. Nah, he's graduated. Yeah. I was gonna say. Still holding on to the memory, though. <laughs> Still holding on to that. Yeah, memory. but uh, there, there definitely is a lot of optimism moving forward with the football program. As part of that, West Virginia coaches hit the road, the recruiting. They're going to be all over this week. We have a complete list of where you can see uh, where's Will. Uh, where's Will? Where's Neil Brown? I uh, can't get my words where's right. Where's the rest of the coaches? Yeah, where, where are the rest of the coaches? You know, who they're going to be seeing? Um, kind of like, where's Waldo? Maybe that's where I got confused trying to make a joke. Probably <laughs> should stop doing that. Uh, I do think that West Virginia is going to carry some positive momentum here into December. I uh, have 15 commitments now. The most recent, a big-time commitment from in-state guy. Neil Brown said when he took the job, one of his priorities was keep the best players home. In-state well, recruiting. If you look at the, the rivals' recruiting rankings, the top two players are now committed to West Virginia. As the Mountaineers were able to reel in Sean Martin, uh, he's a big fish. He's been one of the biggest fish on the line since they took this job. You know, made him a priority from day one. Uh, even when he committed to North Carolina early, they never gave up. You know, and, and the thing about it that's that's important is not just because he's from in state, because really the makeup of the roster, it doesn't matter as long as you win football games. But what's really important about it is not only is it momentum for the in state angle, but it's at a position of need. Mm-hmm. He's a six foot six, two hundred and fifty five pound defensive lineman that is highly impressive at the high school level. Had offers from a lot of schools. Penn State wanted him, Virginia Tech, Oregon, a bunch of schools. Took four official visits. Uh, West Virginia was able to get him to kind of back off his pledge to North Carolina and then commit to the Mountaineers. So big time win. Uh, you could tell on social media if you follow that kind of stuff on on Sunday. Coaches were going crazy, and Mm -hmm. they rightfully should. It was a big one. Because uh, West Virginia's missed out on some top in-state guys of late. And uh, no matter how you want to spin it, that never looks good, you know, from a perspective angle. But West Virginia, you know, from 2017 to 2019, they landed six of 14 Power 5 guys in the state. That can't happen. Uh, That number's got to get better. Uh, Under Neil Brown, now his first full year, they're two for two on guys that have full committable offers. So, pretty good. Basketball team, we got a lot to talk about there, including sixth man of the year, Derek Culver. Came off the bench against Rhode Island, had the best game of the season, uh, his best scoring game of his career, 25 points, 11 rebounds. Uh, Really seemed to provide a spark, and it'll be interesting to see to me if that's a one-time thing or maybe Hugs used that as kind of his Jay Sean Page, Tariq Phillip formula. And there's a lot to like with this basketball team up to this point, not only with the play of Derek Culver coming off the bench, 
uh, here lately, especially with that uh, dominant performance against Rhode Island. But you know, how how is he going to work with Oscar Shibwe there there in the post? I mean, they've shown that they can be uh, a good a good duo down uh, down low there. But at the same time, you know, Huggins has said they kind of get in each other's way sometimes. Uh, that's still a work in progress. I think I think this team is still a work in progress. A lot of things to like. They're still young. But they do a lot of they did they they do a lot of things well. I think one of the bright spots too has been Miles McBride, a true freshman, but doesn't look like it. <laughs> he doesn't play like it either. Really come up uh, in the clutch for Western, especially during the Cancun uh, challenge. I uh, didn't really have uh, eye popping stats against Rhode Island, but he had some free throws there you know, down the stretch that really helped them. Yeah, his his ability to try and want the ball late, I think, is important. Mm-hmm. Oscar Shubwe is off to a pretty pretty good start. Uh, in fact, uh, no Mountaineer since seventy seven seventy eight has been able to put up 17 points and 17 rebounds twice in the same season. And he's done it through seven games twice already. Uh, speaks volumes to how the expectations of him. He finished with 11-9 and nine as a true freshman on Sunday, and people were almost looking at it like that's a bad game. So a lot a lot of optimism around the Hoos program. The, uh, you'll take 7-0 and o, uh, over what last year was any day of the week. Well, I was going to say, they've already almost matched their you know, ha- half of the total from last year. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll take 7-0. and o. They're going for 8-0, and o, though, against St. John's. Fitting. Uh, it's fitting in the sense that the last time West Virginia started a season 8-0, they were in the Big East. It's the year West Virginia went to the Final Four. They're going to be playing a Big East team in the Garden in St. John's. So that'll be an interesting game. West Virginia gets that win. I think they start to get some buzz to possibly get in the top 25. They were 32nd in the AP this week. Uh, another win probably gets them in, considering all the other things going on around college basketball. But a lot of optimism. Uh, people are happy about hoops, and that's good because – this time of the year, you'll take anything you can get that'll warm your heart. Well, I think the good thing is, too, is that this team has seen adversity as well. I mean, we saw the Rhode Island game, and we saw them being down 15 in one game during the Cancun Challenge. Uh, they were able to come back in that game, pull off a win. They are able to you know, pull off a late win against Rhode Island as well. Last topic of note, uh, flip back to recruiting a little bit. West Virginia's going to host some official visitors this weekend. We got the full list over at WVSports.com, but some guys that could be close to rounding out this class. They have 15 commitments. They got to get a couple more uh, really to kind of feel good about it. I I asked Neil about this. He's going to save a couple scholarships uh, for transfers. So I'd say reasonably between six, seven more guys in the next couple weeks. They'll host guys this weekend. They'll host guys next weekend. And then your signing period is December 18th through 20th. So it's coming up. We're here before you know it. And if you want to stay up to date on all that stuff and all things West Virginia, we want to talk about our promo right now. Really good deal. We got two options here, and you can't go wrong with either of them. It's holiday season. You got to get this, though, because it's going to end very soon. Um, you get 50% off uh, an annual subscription, and we'll give you $50 worth of West Virginia gear. You pick it. That means you basically pay nothing in the long run. It's holiday season. You can get the gear for yourself, get it for somebody else. You don't want West Virginia gear? Pay 25% off an annual subscription, and you get $75 to get Adidas gear. So anything you want, new shoes, new jacket, new shirt, you pick it. Uh, two great deals. Details are over on the site. That's WVSports.com. I recommend you check it out. If you enjoy this program, you'll really enjoy what we do over there. Uh, a lot more full-blown. But if this is your first time watching, hit subscribe. And thanks for tuning in again. We'll be back with another edition later this week.